this video, we're going to look at the identity function and some of its basic characteristics. So in your very first algebra class, you probably learned the identity function. You may not have known it was called that, but it's just y equals x. And I like to nickname this one the slide, just because of how it looks when you graph it. All right, so for any graph, if you want to get exact points and you don't know the graph, you can make a t-table. It's a good place to start. Once you know the graph, you won't have to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and get a good picture of this graph and then we'll list some of its characteristics. So a good starting point for making a table of values is to use negative one, zero, and one for x. You may have to adjust that depending on the graph, but it's a good place to get started. All right, so we'll substitute in negative one for x, zero, and one. Okay, well the identity function is called that because it basically identifies itself or if you substitute in a negative one for x, that means y is also negative one. That's the output. All right, so it just outputs itself. And so that's pretty easy to graph. Let's get those three points. We have negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and one, one. And of course you could do more, but we really just need a sketch. And so here is a sketch of the identity functions graph. All right, so you should be able to come up with that picture very quickly um, once you are familiar with this function. Um, so if somebody says y equals x, this is what you should think. All right, so we're going to now look at a few characteristics of this. We'll do the domain and range, the intercepts, the symmetry, and we'll also work on increasing or decreasing intervals. And for all of this, we'll use where it's applicable interval notation. So if you need some tips on that, go check out that video. Um, once you get used to interval notation, it's really a great way to go. All right, so we know that the domain is just a list of all the possible x's for a particular graph. And so when you're looking at domain, you wanna look from the far left to the far right of the graph, and you'll describe that thinking, what are all the possible x values? On this graph. So looking from left to right here, so I'm just going to highlight in green, it's pretty easy to see that this graph goes from negative infinity until infinity. All x's are possible. So where you might have written all real numbers previously in interval notation, we state that by saying negative infinity to infinity. So the range is very similar, but this time we're stating a list of all the possible y values for this function. So I like to say, look from bottom to top, and that will help you make sure you're listing the y values. So we're gonna kind of trace the same thing again from bottom to top, but remember we're really looking at the y values. Okay, still from negative infinity to infinity here. So let's go ahead and mark that. negative infinity to infinity. Okay, always good to know the intercepts. You can see that in this case, there's only one x-intercept. It happens at the origin. So we'll write that ordered pair, zero, zero. And when that happens, that's our y-intercept as well. Okay, so symmetry. What we're thinking about with symmetry, there are a couple different types. You can have y-axis, origin, or none if you're looking at a function. There is x-axis symmetry for some graphs, but you won't have that with a function because you you can get into that a little bit more, but it wouldn't be a function. So in this case, we can tell there's no y-axis symmetry because if you reflected the graph over the y-axis, it would not land on top of itself. You can look at this geometrically too. You could say that for every x, y on the graph, there should be a negative x with the same y on the graph, um, and that's not the case here. So let's look closer at origin symmetry. Geometrically, that says for every x, y you have on the graph, there should be negative x, negative y on the graph. So let's look at 1, 1. If 1, 1's on the graph, then negative 1, negative 1 should be as well. Okay, so that's one example, but that would have to be true for all points on the graph. And an easy way to tell that 
is to see if you were to rotate this graph 180 degrees about the origin. So if you were to rotate it 180 degrees, would it land back on itself? And so in this case, yes, it would. It takes a little getting used to, but you'll start to recognize these graphs that have origin symmetry. Okay, so let's say we have origin symmetry. And when a function has origin symmetry, we can term this a special type of function. We can give it the name odd, an odd function. If it had had y-axis symmetry, you would have an even function. Okay, so it's just something nice to know. All right, finally, intervals of increasing and decreasing. And remember, we should do this reading from left to right. And we're using the x's to talk about what the y values are doing. So if we follow this graph, I'm going to put my pen on the leftmost point that I've drawn. And if we move from left to right, you should feel that you are increasing or the y values are increasing as your x's increase. So we are actually increasing over the entirety of this graph. There is no decreasing. Um, so we can fill that in. We are increasing over the entire graph from negative infinity to infinity. We are never decreasing. So watch some of the videos on the other essential functions and you'll see something a little bit more complex with this. This one's a, a kind of simple case where you're just increasing over the whole graph. Um, but with many of the others, you'll have much more interesting intervals of increasing and decreasing and you'll get some good practice with that. All right, so this is the identity function, y equals x or the slide um, and some of its characteristics.